You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to episode number 355. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it very, very much. Yes, we do. Now, Rob, yeah. do you like to hike? I love to hike. Do you like to bike? I do like to bike. Do you ever take a trip to the lake, maybe? Definitely go to the lake up north. I prefer, not south. I don't blame you. I don't blame you one bit. Now, whenever you're going hiking, biking, or boating, mm-hmm. do you ever find yourself in a national park? Often. Yeah, right? More seems, often than not, probably. Right? Yep. It seems to happen yep. a lot here in the Southwest. And before 2014, we were allowed to fly in national parks without an issue. In fact, recently I went to Lake Mead. And if you ever go to Lake Mead, you may want to try this because you'll get a great laugh. What am I talking about? I'm talking about going through the permitting booth at Lake Mead. I'm not kidding. Okay. Um, I drove through with my car, which, as most of you know, has a giant drone on the side of it. And it says Legal Flyer because we created the app Legal Flyer. It's on my car. It kind of looks like a political statement, even though it's not. And it just makes it's kind of fun for me. But sure. anyway, the lady says to me as I'm pulling into Lake Mead to go boating with one of our members. Who's and this was not that long ago. This was April of this year, April 25th of this year, Okay. because it was National Parks Week, so I didn't have to pay to get in, which was awesome. Um, But that being said, I went up to the counter, and she said, sir, uh, I just want you to know that no drones are allowed here. And I said, I said, oh, really? (laughs) Didn't know that. And she said that because she saw your car. Yes. That's what you're thinking. Yes. Okay. And, um, so don't but, put a drone sticker on your car. <laughs> but here's the funny thing, right? She's like, oh, but if you have model airplanes, the model airplane field is over by the water and you got to drive about 300 yards past the first dock and you'll see it on the left-hand side. Hmm. And I so was like- So model airplane's okay, drone's not okay. So I said, uh, so, yeah, right? Okay. Th- this is my thought process too, right? right. So I'm like- So how do you guys define the difference between model airplanes and drones? Did you ask her that? Oh, yeah. Dude, how sarcastic am I? Like, come on. You think I wouldn't ask that question? No, (laughs) I I would think that you would, just clarifying. It doesn't even need to be a sarcastic question. It's a legitimate question. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, and Jason sitting next to me is just like trying to hold it in and not laugh the entire time. Um, But I said, you know, what's the difference? And she goes, well, sir... Model airplanes, they just fly, right? It's the drones that are the problem. And I said, oh, really? You know, why are the drones a problem? She's like, oh, well, they have cameras on them. Yeah. And mm. I said, oh, and model airplanes don't have FPV cameras on them or cameras on them at all? And she's like, no, I've never heard of that. And I did. <laughs> J- <laughs> Jason. And therefore. And Jason starts laughing next to me. And I'm like, don't worry, lady. We're not going to fly here. But you got that all wrong. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> it's just an example of perception is many people's reality. It's everybody's yeah. reality is and one's perception. Ignorance is bliss. So or not. Anyway, if you remember in twenty four before twenty fourteen, you could fly in parks and it was a never a problem. And this week, we actually tried reaching out um, to the head of policy uh, development at national parks and asked her if they were ever going to plan on changing the rules. Uh, we got a response, um, and we're going to talk about that more. Once we get into today's question, which is brought to you by Legal Flyer. Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 333 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27, which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the app store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Hi guys, this is Dave from uh, Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. Uh, I was on a trip recently, and part of it uh, was in a national park. And of course, I kept seeing spectacular sites to fly, but I know the National Park Service has banned any flights by drones. 
But can someone get a permit to fly in a park or is there any work being done to allow drones to fly with our national parks um, uh, that you know of? Good question. And uh, I just appreciate that he's approaching it this way, making sure he's doing things the right way. That's what everybody should be doing. Definitely. Instead of sneaking them drones on to the national parks and flying it's, without... It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Kind of people. Anyway, you know, before 2014, you could go to Horseshoe Bend Outlook. You know, that's where the Grand Canyon stand up with water. It looks like a big horseshoe. DJI even did the Phantom 1 and Phantom 2 release photos hmm. in a national park area right before it was an issue so they issued something that said you can no longer do that is that what happened they issued in the national park service is the only uh federal government agency that actually has a law on the books against drones um okay so nps national park service they're like the federal police um they can actually confiscate your gear Hmm. which is the only federal agency that can actually confiscate your gear Without in the United like a States. Without a court order or Correct. something. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, um, he asked the question, you know, can we get a permit to fly in national parks? Uh, now, on the website, if you actually go to the website, I think it's National Park Service or NPS.gov. Um, here it is. Let's see. NPS.gov. Um, you can get a permit to film, photograph, and sound record, but they say that there's a minimum of two to four weeks, depending on the project type and volume of request, is required to process and issue a permit. But right below that, they say it's a no drone zone. Drone use is strictly prohibited in all national parks. But that's not true, because if you actually dive into the law of what the NPS actually put out, um, and National Park Service themselves can use drones as long mm-hmm. as it's approved by the administrator. So I reached out to, uh, what was her name, uh, the NPS Office of Policy, or policy underscore office at nps.gov, And I wrote, Dear National Parks, before 2014, many responsible drone pilots were able to truly enjoy the beautiful new perspective with their drone. After the temporary rule, which, by the way, when NPS did release this information, it was right after some guy was in Yellowstone, flew a drone up, and landed it in the geyser. If you know, do you remember that? So this was kind of that ad hoc, oh no, we've got to stop drones now. It's the way the government responds to most things. Knee jerk without really thinking it through. Well, yeah, because like I said before the podcast, you know, everyone is more flexible in time of crisis. So if we can create a crisis, we're going to get things to change. Right. You saw a crisis with the healthcare system, with the VA, then we got Obamacare, and that sure worked out well. Anyway, um, <laughs> Uh, so, I, continuing with my email to NPS, he said, one argument I heard was, you can't fly your drone, but you can fly model aircraft. I actually mentioned the story that I told hmm. in the beginning of cool. the podcast. Um, and I asked what the difference, yeah, I asked what the difference was between the two, and she said that, uh, you know, there were no FPV cameras, and then I stated, model aircraft have had FPV cameras since, like, the early 80s. Anyway, the point for my request is to see if someone would be willing to talk to us on the podcast about a potential rule change. The drone rule even states it's a temporary rule. So when can we expect a change? There are many re- there are many irresponsible drone pilots, but why not make it an easy, streamlined process to allow responsible drone pli- pilots to fly in national parks? Even make some more money for NPS on the side with the permitting process, and we all know you're hurting in your budget anyway. Um, and then I said, I said I foresee a budget increase in your future. <laughs> so do you? Yeah, I, I'm very blunt when I talk to people. <laughs> That's one word for it. <laughs> anyway. um, so I got a response. Uh, thank you for your email. Policy Memorandum 14-05 regarding unmanned aircraft contains a list of frequently asked questions, and it goes on to state that additional questions may be addressed to the Associate Director, Visitor, Visitor and Resource Protection, Mr. Rick Obernesser, who may be reached at rick underscore O-B-E-R-N-E-S-S-E-R at nps.gov. Okay. I reached out to Rick, asked him the same set of questions, mm-hmm. if we could have a conversation about this, and I've gotten no response. How long ago did you email him? Um, that was a week ago. Okay. So, so maybe he's on vacation. In a national park, flying In a drone. national park. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. 
<laughs> he's flying his model airplane. Oh, that's right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> In all seriousness, who knows? We'll give him a little bit more time. Yeah. Um, potentially, he's you know it's summertime. Maybe he's out doing something, vacationing or not. But but to ask to answer the question, the mm-hmm. viewer's question: Can you get a permit to fly in national parks? I have heard of two companies getting successful permits to fly in national parks using their drone. Um, I myself have applied for a permit. I was told to wait six months. Like literally, it would take six months to get the permit. Oh, really? Yeah. So So they said they would work on it. It it would come, but it would be six months before it did. Mm -hmm. In fact, I missed a job with one of the biggest names in YouTube because of this whole permitting process, which really sucks. So yeah, Devin's super tramp. So my hunch is that we're going to see videos of whatever you are going to do, doing it the right way from somebody doing it the wrong way. I don't, I don't get what you're saying. So that whatever you were going to film, yeah. they're still going to do it. Oh, yeah. Somebody's going to film it. Uh huh. It'll just be somebody that didn't care to go through the process the way that you were trying to go well, through you the know process. How, yeah. Well, how would, you know, how would you feel if, uh, like, for example, I have friends from Vienna, right, who mm-hmm. just went to Worlds. I went to Worlds, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and just before they were at Worlds, they were at Lake Powell. And they got tons of footage. Lake Powell, by the way, is in a national park. They got tons of footage. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching their video. I'm like, oh, man, this Lake Powell footy is amazing. It's so good. How does it make you feel if you know that other people go to national parks and they film all the time with their drone and they don't even live in this country and nothing is ever going to happen to them? Yeah. You know? It sucks. It's like the reality. It's like, why can't I do it? Right. You know? Yeah. No, definitely. So let me ask you. Okay. So number one, there is a way to get a permit. It could take a long time, but it's right there on the website and there's a link and you can go do it that way, right? Yes. So what about taking off? I know there's something you've talked about in the past, taking off outside the park and then flying over the park. Yeah, thanks for bringing this up. So this is actually how I've stayed compliant while actually filming at Lake Powell over the Mm -hmm. last year, um, is that it adjoins the Navajo Nation. Mm -hmm. And as long as I take off and land on the Navajo Nation, they can't tell me anything. They can't. They cannot even... Yeah, they can't tell me anything. And this is how I know this is for a fact true... Um, I was approached by NPS at Lake Powell, mm-hmm. uh, and he said, you know, did you take off and land from the boat or did you take off and land from the canyon? And I said, well, sir, it's my uh, understanding that if you take off and land from the canyon wall where it's not actually in the national park, then the flight itself is actually legal because we did not take off and land in the park. And he was like, damn, you're right. <laughs> you and got him. Okay. And so- it, I was surprised that he knew that, though. Like, I was, he was very very, very knowledgeable. And he's like, well, if that wasn't the case, I can take all of your equipment right now, including your SD cards. So beware. Yeah. But so let me ask you this, then an extension of that question, does the drone have to be outside of the boundary or do you and the drone have to be outside of the boundary? So for example, if you're sitting in the water in the boat with the controller and the drone is sitting on the canyon wall, maybe somebody set it up there for you or something on the other side of the boundary, how would that work i don't see i don't see why that is an issue because the vehicle is still taking off and landing outside of the national park service i mean i would think that too but i don't know if that's yeah legitimately correct now there is just so you know there is i believe it's in oh man i'm not gonna remember this law so i probably shouldn't even say it I think it's like 91115, but um, in the FAR AIM, in the Federal Aviation Regulations, there is actually a rule where you have to stay over, I think it's I think it's one or 2,000 feet, you have to stay over national parks. Um, but I know that nobody follows that rule because, again, if you go to Lake Powell, you go to Antelope Point Marina, uh, you know, there are people who take off their Robinson 44s, R22s, Bell 206 long ranges off of their houseboat. Mm-hmm. that's 50 feet over the water. Right. You know, now are they getting clearance from the local tower at Page Airport? I'm sure they are because they're flying in their airspace. Um, but, you know, it's just like with all these little laws, you know, I think of the cell phone law again, with all these little laws, um, you know, oh, you can't do this, but society as a whole says, yeah, whatever, we're doing it anyway. Right. I think this is just another example, right? Because here's what I have to say to every FAA guy that's ever sent a harassing letter to a drone pilot. Do you ever take off early on Friday afternoons, even though you are federally mandated to be there 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week, and you are mandated to be there until, what is it, 4.30 or 5 o'clock, depending on when you get in? So let me ask you, how many times have you left the office early? 
you know, it's all about your flexibility in the rules and how you see the rules. And I bring this up just for drones in national parks because how come you can have an ATV, how come you can have a dirt bike that's destroying the territory, that's, you know, destroying the air quality around it is super loud, definitely doesn't help anything for the animals, but, you know, our four-pound, like, buzzing bird is an issue. Now, I understand that there is a difference in barrier to entry with an ATV than a drone. You know, a drone's 1500 bucks, and ATV is 10 grand. Mm -hmm. So the, the potential that you have irresponsible people with an ATV goes down because the barrier to entry is higher. Still, that being said, I think you can cause a lot more damage with one of those vehicles than sure. you can an actual drone. So National Park Service, we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear if there's going to be a rule change. We would love to hear... You know, if there's a plan in the system. Yeah, just what's the thinking right now? What are you guys talking about? And what are the plans? Yeah. And, and the whys? And what, there, what can we do to help? That is a great answer. That is a great question. Because we get it. There are irresponsible people out there. We get it. People have crashed drones in your geysers, and that could cause a, a severe um, backlash, you know, to the very the very nature you're trying to protect. We totally get that. Right. Um, but we also think that there should be some responsible way uh, to comply, you know, with your wishes, your demands, and still be able to fly. Yeah. And you know what? As, I, as we sit here and, and talk about this, Rob, it really makes me think, when we see 107 come out, will National Park Service change their rules and say, well, if you have your drone license, you'll be able to fly? Yeah. Well, let's hope so. And on that we'll bombshell, see. that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com and upload your question, whether it's business-related, FPV racing-related, technology-related, or just about your phantom. Let us know, and we will answer it. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that feedback, Rob. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> we believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts and apprentices we are creators we are the drone youth